Yes, hello everybody, welcome to the Clarets Daily News here on Turfcast and welcome back to the channel. Unfortunately, just like yesterday, it's, it's a little bit quiet again at the minute. That could be something to do with the fact that I was at work all day today, and I, well, yesterday, Monday, um, so I may have missed some bits, but I've had a quick look tonight since I've been at home and there's, there's not much out there, if I'm honest with you, at the minute. Um so much to the point, I'm actually going to talk about tickets. If you're watching this on Tuesday, Tuesday morning, uh, the tickets for Luton will come out if you have 2,000 plus loyalty points. There's been a bit of a hoo-ha recently because I think people have only just started to realise that there's the platinum membership, whereas if you pay £150, then you can jump the queue despite not having any loyalty points. And... Yeah, it doesn't sound great, does it? That I'll be honest, it's it's not great. It doesn't incentivize loyalty. It just thinks I've got enough money. I'll just spend hundred and fifty quid on it. But we had something like this last season, and I don't remember there being this much of an uproar on the forums and social media. There may have been a little bit, if I'm honest, but but I can't remember it being this much. Um, I, I don't think it's going to be that much of an issue this season. I think people are are getting het up about it because it doesn't reward loyalty like loyal fans um put into traveling home and away and season tickets and things like that so it does turn its back slightly on that but i think the maximum seats that they can get for the entirety of the platinum membership is is only 10 percent. not everything you see on turfcast is true that could be a little bit higher or lower but i think it's only 10 percent which obviously means, for example, if we get a 3k away following, only 300 will be sold to Platinum members. However, I doubt there's even 100 Platinum members. Apparently last year there was 100 to 150, and you would have thought with it being the Premier League last year, there would be more than what there is this year. Again, that's just me thinking out loud, I have not seen the numbers, but I, I don't really get the uproar at the minute because the, you know, the time for uproar was last year when it happened. I don't really understand why people are kicking off about it. I did put a tweet up today, so maybe people have seen that tweet and started to realise that these things are in place. And obviously the fact that the tickets start went on sale as on Monday. So yesterday when you're watching this, when it was meant to be for season ticket holders, but it wasn't, it was for platinum members. So I think people are then starting to realise, well, this is a lot of rubbish. And I get it. It doesn't reward loyalty, and I can understand why people could would be frustrated with that. But I'm not getting I'm not getting head head up about this at all. I, I I don't really I don't really think it's going to be that much of an issue. I can't see there being too many platinum members. I think they might have sold a few more today when people have started to get you know a little bit twitchy wanting to get tickets. Um, I did look at it if I'm honest with you because I wanted to make sure I could get Oxford tickets or you know Blackburn tickets but not for 150 quid. I'd, I'd rather just take the risk. So if somebody wants to spend 150 quid and, and not even guarantee themselves any tickets, because of course, if they have sold more than you know the 10%, then they're not going to potentially guarantee the tickets. But another thing is all that Claret's Foundation members have been getting priority access, I believe, for quite a while. And people have never really been getting worked up about that one. So yeah, it just all seems a lot of fuss. Uh, not necessarily about nothing, because I can understand the frustrations, but I don't understand why now. So I think, yeah, I don't really understand why everyone's kicking off about it at the minute. But the news that I was bringing you, and this is how quiet it is today, <laughs> is that if you're watching this on Tuesday morning, Luton tickets uh, for the first game of the season, away from home, obviously, at Kenilworth Road, Monday night are now on sale or will be on sale at 10am, 9am. I don't know the exact time, but if you have over 2,000 loyalty points, then you can get Luton tickets today as of Tuesday. Now, don't worry, obviously, there is a bit of transfer gossip in this, and it's it's that's why I set the show up, right? I set the show up to, to discuss transfer gossip, rumours, news, but there just genuinely hasn't been anything out there today apart from this tiny piece, and it's it's regarding Sanderberg again, so it's it might make everybody, you know, a little bit anxious. I, I'm not personally getting anxious about it because A, I don't suspect he's going to go to Turkey, which is what the report is from. Obviously, we mentioned it a while ago. And B, I'm completely resigned to losing him. I don't think we can keep hold of Sander Berg for how well he played last season in the Championship. He will be absolutely phenomenal for us in this league, just as he was last year after he clicked into, in, into gear, into his 
into his role and, and he found his role within the squad. But because of that and because of how well he played last season, I'm fully expecting him to leave. So I'm not getting overly worried about this news because I'm expecting him to leave anyway. But according to Turkish news outlet Derilis Post. Postase, definitely pronounced that wrong. Apologies to any Turkish clarets. Um, but they have claimed that Fenerbahce, of course, reported it. Um, I think it was on Friday's show. It might have been yesterday's show. I can't really remember. But we have reported it recently that there was interest from Fenerbahce and they just basically asked a question about his availability. Well, according to this report in the Turkish news outlet, they have stepped up their pursuit of Sander Burge. And the Norwegian international has been linked with the Turkish side, says the reports in recent days following claims they'd initiated talks back with the championship side. And according to the Turkish media outlet, Sander is on a five-man shortlist of midfielders that Fenerbahce are looking to potentially bring in this summer. It is claimed the sporting director of Fenerbahce will this week travel to England to hold transfer talks with the central midfielder. It says with the central midfielder, it will be with his agent, obviously. Uh, and he goes on to say that uh, he's going to hold negotiations um, with Burnley as a club as well, and then a decision will be made on the player. The reason why I don't think he will go to Turkey is because I suspect we'll be asking for quite a bit for him. I'll probably repeat it myself from the other show. I've slept since then, so I can't remember exactly what I said. But for them to come in and offer us what we want, it will probably be a record, a transfer record for the Turkish League. I just can't see it happening and I can't see him wanting to go there at this stage of his career. There was somebody talking about Wolves on Twitter Clarets, but I'm not sure how legit that was. I've not seen anything regarding Wolves just yet. We'll see if that does come true. I think somebody like Wolves would would be an okay move for him, but I would suspect he'd be aiming higher. Um, but I think I think he will stay in the prep. Put it this way, Wolves are a better place to go than, than Fenerbahce for Sanderberg. Uh, in terms of the weather, probably Fenerbahce. Um, but I, I just I just can't see it. I just genuinely cannot see it. And again, this it, I could look very silly in two weeks' time when he's holding up the, the Fenerbahce scarf, right? But I would be very, very, very surprised if Sanderberg went to Fenerbahce. But yeah, Turkish news outlet, I'm not even going to pronounce the name again, but a Turkish news outlet is just picking up the story from a couple of days ago about Fenerbahce interesting. Uh, Fenerbahce, sorry, being interested. That was horrendous. Fenerbahce being interested in Sanderberg. But yeah. Not for me. I, I just genuinely... They can, they can fly over here as much as they want. They can talk to them as much as they want. As soon as Burnley turn around and say, we want this much, I think they'll be like, right, see you later, and just get back on the plane. Genuinely cannot see this one happening. Yeah, that's pretty much it from me. And and the way that I just mumbled over the words Sanderberg and Fenerbahce and mix them together in that last link, it, it, it's probably for the best. I did just want to quickly mention, though, an interview that is on the Burnley FC homepage and the Burnley FC YouTube channel. I'd always recommend paying more attention to the YouTube channel and the fan uh, and the web page because they do put some good stuff on there. Um, but they've got an interview up there at the minute with Scott Parker. You can watch it, like I said, on the YouTube channel. I did watch. This has been out for a few days. I'll be honest with you, but I'm just using it now to pad out the rest of the show. But yeah, it, it it's a nice interview with Scott Parker. He spoke about. Um, you know, encouraging words ahead of the new championship campaign and he said some nice comments I'll just quickly get them up now on my screen just basically to, it was it was the article in the and the YouTube video about his first two weeks basically uh, and he was saying that it, it's gelled together really well since he's been there I said I've been in this position as a coach before in terms of teams who have been relegated and maybe the psychological element that it brings but I haven't really seen much of that here. I've seen a really good atmosphere around the place and a real determination of the job in hand this year. I've tried to put my stamp on that as well in terms of creating an environment and a culture here which is wanting to get better and improve every single day. The whole football club has embraced that as a coach. That's what you need. You can come with your ideas, you can come with all the tactical noise, but ultimately what you need first and foremost is a willingness to learn and an environment to want to come into and enjoy. Look, I have said several times that I was underwhelmed was a word I used by the Scott Parker interview uh, appointment. But the more I hear him talk, the more I am starting to like him. That might change four games into the season if we've lost 
three and drawn one. But who knows? But the more I hear him speak, and he, and he's obviously very good with his words. He's media trained, right? Like I've said a million times, I think I'm probably just falling into this trap of of seeing. You know, a man who knows what he's saying, knows when to say the right things. I'm probably just falling into that trap. But the more I hear him speak, the more I think, yeah, this guy knows what he's on about. And I'm, I'm starting to look forward to the season now. And I'm starting to come around to the Scott Parker appointment, which it sounds like that's pretty much what happened with Alan Pace. He got Scott Parker into the interview. He wowed everybody, according to the article that was in The Athletic a couple of days ago. That might have been brought today, actually, uh, uh, the, the Athletic article. I'll probably tell you more about the Athletic article tomorrow because I'll tell you what I'll do for you guys I'll sign up to the athletic uh, and just mention some of the stuff that was said in there on tomorrow's show but yeah the more I hear Scott Parker speak the more I start to like him the more I look forward to the season but as always I'll always recommend you going to watch the club's content on the YouTube channel like I said there's an interview with uh, Parker on there you can go and watch it now where he spoke about his first two weeks at Turf Moor but yeah unfortunately like I said a little bit quiet this one it's not great for the new podcasters, is it? I've done two of the po- two of the shows since the new podcast has been out. And I've just gone, it's really quiet. There's not much at the minute. It will pick up, I promise you all. But yeah, um, it was <laughs> so quiet. I even had to talk about tickets. But yeah, so the Luton tickets are on sale today. If you listen to this on Tuesday, obviously that's when it's released. At Sanderberg, again, linked to Turkey, linked to Fenerbahce. They can, they can admire him all they want I just can't see them being able to afford him if I'm being honest with you and yeah Scott Parker saying some nice things and giving me a bit of encouragement ahead of the new season uh, but let me know what you think in the comments below especially about the platinum membership it does seem to be a topic that a lot of people I've seen on Twitter getting hot under the collar about and on Claret's Mad as well so you probably do feel quite strongly about it and, and I agree it doesn't incent as I it, <laughs> Doesn't give incentives to loyalty is what I'm trying to say. Um, yeah, 12 hour shift and it's quarter past 10. So I need to go to bed because I'm back in work tomorrow and I'm tripping up all my words. So yeah, let me know what you think in the comments below and we'll be back tomorrow. <laughs>